Y'all just yeah. seem weak. I mean, it's not, it, 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 that might not even be something that's thrust upon them. That may be just the fact that that's just how it is. That's why, like you said, in, in a lot of these African countries, you have brutal dictators, man. Because you gotta, you 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 gotta counteract all that that weakness and that idiocy and that failure, and you gotta like you gotta come with brute force just to override all of that shit. Because if you don't come brutal as the leader, these people will fucking ruin everything. Only way you can keep them in line is to be brutal. Like, do you think, do you think, um, cause there's a lot of black people, like the people in this chat and on the panel, right. Who can do right. Like as a collective, right. Are you saying, are you saying there's a lot of black people here? If you put them together, they will be able to do something together, not in their individual life, but together. Cause I think, right. what you're, I think what you're conflating is. Black people who are successful within the framework of white society on an individual level. Right. I'm talking about all of them together in one place, like in these cities, governments, and in these neighborhoods. It never works like that. Yeah. Black excellence is usually individual. Like I talked about earlier, the example I gave. These NBA players, you've had Hundreds and hundreds of NFL and NBA players getting a hundred million dollar contracts for going on 30 years. Never once have they gotten put their money together and bought a team in any sport. It's never dawned upon them. They never, they never because it doesn't it, they don't prioritize that type of shit. Let's see what's going on down here in um um Tidewater area, seven cities, whatever you want to call it, um of um Virginia. Mm. Now we have new information on a deadly shooting we told you about last night at six. Ports of police have identified a man shot and killed in the city yesterday morning. This happened around 7 a.m. on LaSalle Avenue, just off Elm Avenue. 41-year-old Albert Lamont was shot. He died at the hospital. So far, no suspects in this case. But you should call the crime line or text the P3 Tips app. Just shooting people getting killed. There's no fucking suspects. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just. It's just And a lot of questions remain unanswered for the parents of a teen shot and killed in Portsmouth. We first told you about this story earlier this month. 17-year-old. This little place, Portsmouth. Just a little fucking city. You could look at a map of Virginia and they wouldn't even have a dot for Portsmouth. They wouldn't even have a dot for it. They would have Norfolk. They would have Richmond. They would have Roanoke. They wouldn't even, these are little places on the map where, like, you don't even know about, unless you know somebody, you don't know about this place. You don't even know this place exists. And there's some people there acting like fucking apes, killing each other. And a lot of questions remain unanswered for the parents of a teen shot and killed in Portsmouth. We first told you about this story earlier this month. 17-year-old Jordan Harris Snipes, who went to Lake Taylor High School, was shot on Cedar Lane in Portsmouth on February 11th. He died the next day. The suspect is out there, and the case is still very active. Down on your side, Regina Mobley has the story of a distraught family seeking answers and justice. Regina? A quote from a mom. I've tried to avoid watching news stories about young people being killed, said Leah Harris. But this time, the story is about my son. Tonight, a local family wants to know who snatched the young man who meant so much to them. Love, peace, and happiness are the words loved ones use to describe 17-year-old Jordan Harris Snipes. He wanted to be a, a park ranger and a veterinarian. They took someone, a very special little boy. 
young man, rather. He even served as a mentor at the nonprofit Gear Recovery. Founder Jasmine Garcia told Ten on Your Side he was kind, selfless, and respectful. He wasn't involved in any trouble. It's the kids like him who make a difference. Jordan was not only a volunteer, he was our neighbor, my brother's best friend, and he will surely be missed. His father, via phone, heard the frantic efforts to save his son before paramedics arrived. I heard them say he's going to bleed out. Can you apply pressure? He was rushed to Centera Norfolk General Hospital where doctors... Damn, he played the sax. That's the saxophone, right? Yes, yeah, alto. Yeah. I mean, look at these stories, man. He just dead. No one knows who did it. He's been shot in public, broad daylight. Like, it's not like this kid was like, like you know, it's not like he was walking like by a creek in a wooded area, and he just went missing. This kid. Middle of a city, just walking out, somebody kills him, nobody knows nothing. And it's just like, there's no protest, there's no fucking lawyers with bow ties, there's no fucking activists, nothing. The only way the activists or the lawyers with the bow ties would show up is if this motherfucker was acting like a jackass and got shot by a cop. Unfortunately. heroic efforts to save the Lake Taylor High School student. Father Marcus Snipes wears close to his heart his son's name, and the day he died. He reflected on the last moments. But he fought all the way until his pressure was so low that we took him off of the ventilator. My son still fought for another hour until all of his family members were there. He put a smile on his face with a ventilator in his throat. Two tears came out of his eyes. Jesus Christ, man. Shit, he wasn't ready to go, man. He wasn't ready. He was not ready to go. Mm, mm, mm. These stories are fucking. Oh, shit. If phone heard the frantic efforts to save his son before paramedics arrived. I heard them say he's going to bleed out. Can you apply pressure? He was rushed to Centera Norfolk General Hospital where doctors performed heroic efforts to save the Lake Taylor High School student. Father Marcus Snipes wears close to his heart his son's name and the day he died. He reflected on the last moments. But he fought all the way until his pressure was so low that we took him off of the ventilator. My son still fought for another hour until all of his family members were there. He put a smile on his face with a ventilator in his throat. Two tears came out of his eyes. And he went home. He's in a better place than being here. Funeral services are planned for Saturday morning. Jordan is survived by his parents, eight brothers and three sisters. I have disturbed eight brothers and three sisters. Jesus Christ. Brothers and three sisters. I have disturbing details about this case on wavy.com. If you know who killed Jordan, call the crime line or use the P3 Tips app. Virginia Mobley, 10 on your side. You know what I wonder sometimes, though, I, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's like we got like four hundred people in here, and I'm not saying that you know to go calling people or whatever, but at some point, like, what what else can you do but let let them know, you know, like somehow, like leave a message with somebody, being like, come on, y'all gonna have to put some of these people in jail and keep them there or you know stop this nonsense i mean i don't know what what people don't people first of all half the people in in in, in the chat are gliders and they're just it's not their it's not their issue they they do right. enough they do enough they prop us up in every way this is their society. This is the cult. 
this this society has come comes from their mind, money, safety, all these things that we would never have back in if we were just alone. We got to take that shit and run with it. Then you got the sons, and if you're a son and you're here, mm-hmm. you're kind of like an outcast, man. You're not really part of the black community. If, if you're a son and you're here, you can't speak about none of this shit around none of the some people you know. Right, right. <laughs> right. They ain't want to hear it. <laughs> I, I'm coming from the position of um, not not putting the 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 responsibility on like <laughs> on the chat or like this group or the people who uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm I'm just saying like. I know on the other side of the issue, um, these people, man, they, they, I believe they must have like phone trees. They be flooding the zone with their position on anything. And I think that's part of, you know, their sway. It makes them seem like they, they have more numbers than, than the, the n- normal good people. So I don't know, like besides calling whoever, you know, you know, patriotically and peacefully let your voice be heard type of thing, you know. I don't know, man. I don't know what can be done. Also now at six, a search for a killer months after a man was found dead in a yard. Loved ones have so many questions. So do police. And they're hoping to keep this investigation alive and active before it ends up becoming a cold case. Good evening and thanks for joining us. This deadly shooting has haunted Newport News police for more than four months. Loved ones also say that they can't rest until they find out who killed Antoine Artis. The 21-year-old was shot November 10th in a yard on Windy Way off of Knowles Drive. Initially, this was just a death investigation, but now police are looking for a suspect and they want to find that person quickly. Down on your side, Haley Mylon has more from family members about the victim in this deadly shooting. 21-year-old Anton Artis was found dead here near these apartments in Newport News. Police say he was shot and killed by a single gunshot wound, but no one is in custody. Now, his family told me today that he was found with no phone, no wallet, and no ID. He didn't deserve to die like he did. Patricia Artis says she was shocked when police told her that her grandson was found shot in Newport News. She says he was found under strange circumstances near an apartment complex on Windy Way. Police say a single gunshot wound was his cause of death. More than three months later, investigators have no answers. They have no leads, you know, and I just want justice for my grandson. Initially dubbed a death investigation, the Newport News Police Department posted this video on its YouTube page two days ago. I'm Corporal Blanks. The Newport News Police Department needs your help in solving a homicide. Calling artists shooting a homicide, the killer still on the loose. His younger brother, Damio, says it's a daily struggle pushing through without knowing why his brother was shot. I mean, I think about it every day, but I mean, can't, can't do nothing about it. I mean, like, look at all the sadness, man. I mean, very few of these stories is anybody in custody. It's just the guy dead. He was murdered in a public place and he's dead. I mean, the kid, whoever the fuck. through without knowing why his brother was shot. I mean, I think about it every day, but I mean, I can't, can't do nothing about it. You know, and it, and it hurts, I push it, push it away. Patricia is urging anyone with information on her grandson's death to come forward. We just want justice. We just want justice for our grandson, for the son. His brother, we just want justice. And I know it's somebody out there. Somebody knows something. And she's got a message for whoever pulled the trigger. Why did you do this? Why did you have to shoot him like, you know, like a dog? I mean, what did he do to deserve this? I don't think, I don't care what he could have done. I don't think he 
deserve to be shot like he did. Artist's grandmother is begging anyone with information to come forward. If you know anything, you should call the Man. crime line. In Newport News, Haley Milan, 10 on your side. I mean, Jesus Christ. There's nowhere we can go where we won't see the same shit. It's, it's, it's impossible. There's no outliers. There is no outliers. Make sure you hit the PayPal cash up super chat support the channel. There's no outliers. There's no places where it's like, well, what about here? See, aha. Aha. A man will spend 20 years behind bars in connection to the death of a teenager in man. Norfolk. Rizel Washington was sentenced by a Norfolk judge on Friday. He was charged with second-degree murder in connection to the 17-year-old boy's death in 2020 on Morrell Circle. Sarah Bowen was sentenced to 12 months in jail last week. Man. Just a bunch of killers. And I'm not putting this shit on the news. The local news stations in all these cities feel like this shit is newsworthy. Where every city we go to, they're like, yo, look at this shit. Look at all these niggas killing each other. It's not me fucking doing these news stories. I'm just going to the fucking city and seeing what the fuck they got on the news. And it's a bunch of niggas killing each other. Yeah, I've been hearing more sirens uh, in the last few days around here, even. Newport News police need your help to investigate a homicide. Last November, officers were called to Wendy Way for a person in need of medical help. When officers got there, 21-year-old Antone Artis was found near a fence line. Oh, not this is the same kid. This is the same kid that um, um, we... Okay, so here we go. Now Back we... with a story with an improbable happy ending. It was Father's Day 2022 when Andre Rawls was shot five times by a Portsmouth police officer. Last week, the criminal case against Andre was set aside. Tonight, a follow-up with the dream team that put Andre Rawls back together again. Andre Rawls is now standing tall after an ordeal that could have been deadly. <laughs> He was hospitalized for two months after a Portsmouth police officer shot him five times. Attorney Nathan Chapman did the heavy lifting in court. While the dream team from gun violence, intervention and prevention outreach and research did the heavy lifting at Better Body 757 in Hampton. How did you restore Andre's confidence once you first started working with him? by looking at him as the human being he is. Um, he did not get that from the police officer who emptied fire. How, how do you know that? How do you know the police? Why, why, and then they talk about human beings. They always talk about empathy and compassion and human beings and people seeing them as human beings. But where's this guy? Where are these people when someone doesn't get shot by a cop? The 99% of shootings where it's not a cop. The only reason he sees him as a human being is because he got shot by a cop. Is this his family? Are these? These are people that that's helped rehab soon. Once you first started working with him? By looking at him as the human being he is. Um, he did not get that from the police officer who emptied five bullets into his body. Uh, that should have never happened. Okay, Andre. <laughs> The Dream Team has spent the past two months restoring Andre physically and mentally. Team founder Cameron Bertrand knows all too well the challenges this 20-year-old faces. I, I got shot six years ago. And for anybody who knows what that feels like, having to wake up every day, I still sleep with a boot on my leg. The Dream Team is... Who shot you six years ago? What Was it a human? Was it a, was it, was it a hue man? Was it a black man? Who shot you six years ago, man? Who didn't see you as human? He didn't say the cops. Oh, he would definitely said it. 
but but, but it could have been a white guy, right? A, a vigilante, a lone wolf, right? Mega, <laughs> mega country, mega. Yeah. I got shot six years ago. And for anybody who knows what that feels like, having to wake up every day, I still see for the boot on my leg. Every the Dream Team is proud of Andre's progress. That we've seen improvements in his balance, his coordination, his strength. I can see the confidence in him as he comes in now. There is support for you. We are here for you. You can get better and you will get better, but we have to do this together. Andre has plans to enroll in a trade school and he hopes to be able to play football and basketball again soon. Gun Violence Intervention is a nonprofit organization and there is no charge for its services to restore people, families, and in. Why'd the cops shoot him? Because he was black. <laughs> I mean, shit, I mean. <laughs> I was fucking wondering throughout the video, like, why do you get shot? Why do you get shot? Right now at six, charges set aside for a man shot by a local police officer nearly a year ago. Tonight, in the middle of his recovery, he says justice has been served, at least in his eyes. So, what happens next in the case? Good evening, and thank you for joining us. A lot to cover tonight, but we're going to begin with a sigh of relief for the man in the middle of that officer-involved shooting. Today, serious felony charges were set aside in the case of Andrew Rawls. The 19-year-old appeared today in court in connection with the case on Greenwood Drive in Portsmouth last summer. And tonight, he's telling his story about what happened that day to Ten on Your Side. Our Regina Mobley was in the courtroom today and has more on what happened. Regina? Well, Lena and Tom, a judge today, null prost or set aside the charges against Andre Rawls, who has a history of mental illness. It's a complicated case that Andre's mother hopes will serve as a teachable moment for law enforcement. The physical and psychological recovery for Andre Rawls has been slow and painful. I can't sleep at night and stuff like that. And I have anxiety. Stuff like that. This was the scene on Greenwood Drive on the morning of Father's Day. Rawls was shot by an officer who responded to complaints about a man seen near a home and carrying what a resident called a grilling fork. In a brief but tense hearing, a prosecutor tried to salvage his case, even though he was missing two key witnesses, a resident and the police officer who won't testify since his actions that day are still under investigation. Judge Douglas Ottinger null prost or set aside the criminal case after noting that examiners determined Rawls was not sane when he approached the officer. After the hearing, Rawls, for the first time, offered his account of his encounter with the use of deadly force. Did you intend to harm that police officer or any of the citizens? No, I didn't intend to harm the officer or nothing. I was hallucinating and I thought that it was uh, my ex's father who I had a good relationship with. And um, I picked up the grilling fork because I wanted to be like him and I wanted to show him that I wanted to grill. I had no idea that was a police. I mean, okay. <laughs> he was just... grilling, man. What? It's like, I wanted to show him I could uh, hold a <laughs> fork. Let's just say he's telling the truth, right? But he was Let's just say. <laughs> Let's play along with him. Yeah. The cop that shows up on the scene, man, we're asking too much of cops. If the cop who shows up on the scene is required to know that that's what's going on, we're asking, we, we got to start paying these cops like fucking NBA basketball players. <laughs> the cop shows up on the scene, he has to fucking deal with this fucking shit. He's been called. Now, here's the thing. Someone is frantically on the phone. The dispatcher's relaying the message to him. Are there any units in the area? He's like, yes, I'm in the area. Please, speed over to such and such place right down there's the man. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I mean, golly, man. We asking too much, man. Examiners determined Rawls was not sane when he approached the officer. After the hearing, Rawls, for the first time, offered his account of his encounter with the use of deadly force. Did you intend to harm that police officer or any of the citizens? No, I didn't intend to harm the officer or nothing. I was hallucinating and I thought that it was uh, my ex's father who I had a good relationship with. 
And um, and I picked up the grilling fork because I wanted to be like him and I wanted to show him that I wanted to grill. I had no idea that I was a police officer and I wasn't in my right state of mind. His mother prays his case becomes a teachable moment. I just asked God to be able to open people's hearts to understand what mental illness is, that mental illness what? is real. <laughs> the null cross status is indefinite and... I get sick of hearing that. He wanted to show him he could grill, man. <laughs> this guy might have on your side and that's this, this guy must be the hardest story I ever heard. It's the same thing everywhere. And we're asking people from other groups that don't understand that mind to to police these people. You're asking people from other groups. To police this, they don't understand it. Yeah, it's hard for, you know, it's hard for me to understand. Like, even if you put, you know, black people, I don't know, was the cop white or black? I'm, I'm guess I'm just assuming, I guess. Who knows? But it, I don't know if it matters. I mean, it, it doesn't matter who you are. Like, when you approach that situation, somebody's... Now he's admitting he's he was hallucinating. I mean, it's a tough position for anyone. I mean, wouldn't that mean when that have meant that he'd have to be on he would but he would have been on medication? He, he should he, he, he didn't, didn't take his he didn't take his meds, so he he went he went back to hallucinating. So Maybe he was on his meds. <laughs> I mean, it's just the same thing. Back tonight, a 10 on your side investigation, 15 years in the making. In 2008, two teenage girls were attacked while walking to the bus stop. We followed the case through a long-awaited arrest last October. But tonight, an exclusive look inside the case. From the boy, now a man, wrongfully accused of the crime when he was just 16. Investigative reporter Julie Malay has the story. It was a crime that sent a shockwave of fear through a Norfolk neighborhood in 2008. Verdon Avenue was in turmoil on Wednesday after two teenage girls were sexually assaulted behind this shed. That fear abated when police made a quick arrest. What has been the biggest surprise to everyone on the block is the person arrested and accused of abducting, raping, and sodomizing the girls with a gun is just 16 years old. A community's relief was a family's nightmare. I was sitting there like, what did I do? Trapped in Norfolk City Jail for two months until test results cleared Shaka Harrell's name. My lawyer came and spoke to me when I was in the holding cell today. I was so surprised. I started dancing, you know. I would go home and just lay back. The case ran cold until last October. But first, we have several breaking news stories at midday. First, Norfolk police say they have arrested a serial rapist for assaults that happened 14 years ago. 33-year-old William Phelps IV faces several charges, including rape and aggravated sexual battery. He is charged for the rape of two female teenagers who were sexually assaulted in 2008. The arrest, a relief to a now 31-year-old Shaka. I don't know the guy. I don't want to know the guy. I don't want to, I don't, I'm just glad my name cleared. I saw, I ain't want nothing to do with it from the beginning of it. And it's just like... I had everything to do with it. You see, he doesn't care about the girls. He doesn't care about anything. He just don't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and I'm not saying that he got to be like, you know, but it's just interesting, you know? I don't care. I don't give a fuck about what happened that day. I'm just glad I ain't in it. You know what I'm saying? Because my of our false accusation. Huh? That my name is Bennett and I ain't in it. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just, it just you know, it just, it's interesting. I mean, it, 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 these things are just interesting. I don't think that they, I don't even really judge, judge I'm not even judging. I'm just, just yeah. interesting, you know? The things that are said, you know? Just really interesting. Like, so this dude was 20 when he's, when he, when, when this happened and they just caught him at 33, right? This new, this uh, latest guy. Yeah, the guy who really did it, allegedly. Before the break, we introduced you to Shaka Harrell. He was wrongfully accused of raping two teenage girls in 2008. 
DNA exonerated him, but not before the 16-year-old spent two months in jail. I believe my son. Today, the family got the news they were waiting for. DNA from Shaka didn't match DNA from the girls. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I didn't, I look young. Okay, this is where it must have took place at. I didn't even know the actual place, like the shit. None of that is not what I want to be famous for. Hey, the kid that was accused of rape gets out. Like, I feel as though it diminished my character a little bit. Girls were sexually assaulted. That, that the whole situation changed my life. March 6, 2008. Mwah. The day 16-year-old Shaka Harrell was released from a maximum security cell at Norfolk City Jail. I feel better to be out. So I know that I ain't got to keep waiting. Because when you in there, all you got is time on your hands. Shaka is 31 now. He doesn't live in Norfolk anymore. There's too much stuff happening. The threats, the emails, the walking down the street, people on their porch. Oh, that's, that's just, I hear y'all. They still didn't believe after DNA. I didn't do this. He dropped out of Maury High School. Everybody who was like affiliated with the gang just focused all their attention on me. And I was like, oh, this is bad. I can't take all these dudes. <laughs> and the cop yanks me and was like, yeah, come with me. And pulls me in the building and was like, yeah, how you, you think you're going to be able to go here? But I, well, I know what happened. I know your face. I go home. I'm like, Mom, I ain't going back to school. Shaka moved to Philadelphia, trying to escape the stigma of being wrongfully accused. Of he moved where? <laughs> he moved to Philly. <laughs> well, shit, there's nowhere to go, though. I mean, there's no. There is, I mean, he could have moved to Austin. It, there's nowhere to go, man. Of rape. It took me out of a good predicament where I was at wow. to Philly, where it's just like struggle, 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 struggle. Wavy TV Town was on the scene 15 years ago after two teenage girls were abducted and raped while walking to their bus stop on Verdun Avenue. My niece, she was shaking. She was shaking and crying, and I went and grabbed her and hugged her. Police arrested Shaka within hours. I'm like, you kidding? I ain't do this. Then that's when I think it sparked up. I'll take a DNA test. I'll take a lot of tests. I'll take any type of test on this earth to prove I ain't do this. A Norfolk judge decided to try him as an adult. Getting in jail, it was like a different world. That was the, I never seen nothing like that in my life. I had one guy fight me. I didn't know the guy. He fought me because his mother was raped. Back in a 2008 press release, Norfolk detectives touted Shaka's arrest as the result of a, quote, extensive investigation. These people pointed you out. This crime was committed. You're going to jail for it. The victims told police their attacker was a black male with a white T-shirt over his face. Norfolk police have specific procedures for putting together suspect lineups. Instead of following protocol, detectives showed the girls Shaka's photo in his high school yearbook. Everybody look at First 48, everybody look at bad boys, cops, everybody see stuff on TV. So we know you don't pick somebody out of a yearbook. According to the Innocence Project, mistaken eyewitness identifications contributed to about 69% of more than 375 wrongful convictions since 1989. Those wrongfully accused of crimes exonerated, like Shaka, by DNA. People get out of jail every year. Oh, DNA cleared this man. Oh, DNA cleared this man. I'm just glad this is not 10 years, 30 years, 20 years from now. Last year, Norfolk police did make a match. William Phelps' DNA and fingerprints tied him to the scene. Police say he could be responsible for other rapes in Norfolk and Chesapeake. For executive producer of investigations, Adrian Mayfield, I'm Julie Malay. 10 on your side. You know what I mean? I guess that's great, man. The sun man got off, man. Move yeah. to the sun, man, man. He got off, man. He didn't do it, man. Um, that's really good, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, if he didn't do it, man, shit. Yeah, let him go. Yeah. And on that note, man, I'm out of here, man. Peace out, man. Have a Peace go. out.